My name is Jeremy Walton, and this is how Dune went from digital to film, then back to digital. Let's go. In the world of cinema, the conversation of film versus digital comes up a lot. There's an ongoing debate. Even in the world of YouTube, which is dominated by digital cameras, we still have the film look, which a lot of people still try and achieve. I've done multiple videos on this subject. It mostly comes down to filters or software. You can take a look at my most recent video, my favorite diffusion filters for the Canon R3. That involves Tiffin filters like the black satin filter that creates a soft, gritty look that I love and is used in films and television. Or go check out my video about the software I use, Film Convert Nitrate Digital to Film Done Right, to see the looks you can create with your editing software to match different film stocks. For this video though, as you can tell from the title, we're going to look at the 2021 film Dune, directed by Denis Villeneuve and cinematography by Greg Fraser. Dune is now nominated for 10 Oscars, including Best Cinematography, and they did something a bit different when creating the look for this film, which you might totally love or think is totally crazy. And that's what we're going to get into right now. To start off like every good film should, or every good film that I've ever done research about, starts off with testing. It's probably no surprise they headed two hours outside of LA to capture some sand dunes, and even headed over to the Sepulveda Dam in LA to shoot some tests. What were they shooting on, you ask? We weren't sure in the early days if we would shoot film or digital, and our extensive testing included 35mm, 65mm 5 perf, 65mm 15 perf, digital 35, digital full frame, and digital 65. After all that testing, they threw together a five minute cut of the footage, and what was the result? Had you asked me before that test what I wanted to shoot, it would have been IMAX film, 35 millimeter anamorphic for non-IMAX. That package for me felt good, like just in theory, but in practice, we looked at it and Denis went, this is not right. The filmmakers had a lot of discussions about the look of Dune and how they wanted it to be. They didn't look at the original film and talked about the difference of what something should look like and how to actually achieve that look. A couple things that were important was not having the sand look yellow, but more golden, and for the skies to be hazy, a kind of June gloom you'd find in Los Angeles, which was all taken into consideration. It felt, as Denis put it, a little bit nostalgic, like we were watching something that has happened in the past. The digital, particularly when projected in IMAX, felt more contemporary, but it was a little too crisp. It was a toss up between film and digital. They needed to do something that was the best of both worlds and over the past few years, Fraser was developing a technique he thought he'd try for this film. In theory and in simple testing, it works like this. You basically shoot the movie digitally, give it a quick grade, output it to film, and then grade the scan of that. This gives you the best out of digital and the best out of film, and we found it to be a really interesting process. Before we get into that process, I just want to cover what they used for their camera package. They went with the Arri Alexa LF and Mini with Panavision H-Series and Ultra Vista lenses. As for aspect ratio, well, let's go to IMDb and you can see there's three types, which two are framed for IMAX. What does that mean for you? Let me show you an example of what you can see or more specifically what you don't see and what gets cut off in these aspect ratios. It can make a big difference when watching a film. Even if you wanna see it in IMAX, you might not have a theater near you that offers it. There has been a big debate about releasing movies, in this case in theaters and streaming at the same time, like HBO Max for Dune. This is what Villeneuve has to say about it. When you watch this movie on the big screen, it's almost a physical experience. We designed the movie to be as immersive as possible, and for me, the big screen is part of the language. That might also explain why he went to the lengths he did to create the look he wanted. To continue on with the process, we have the services of Photochem. You can head over to their website and have a look at what they have to offer and the films they've worked on. The senior colorist Dave Cole, who's collaborated with Fraser before, also created many LUTs for the filmmakers to use while filming. After the first color correction pass of the film was done, they did a laser recording film out to Kodak Vision 3 5254 digital intermediate film stock, and then scanned it back to digital. Cole talks about the process in detail. Before filming out, we processed the Time Digital Master, carefully treating the toe and shoulder of the image so that once we recorded it to film and scanned it back, we'd retain the full range of latitude and detail. The process offered them something they felt they couldn't get with film or digital alone. A lot of people talk about the grain of film. A lot of people try to replicate grain. But as Cole puts it, the whole process wasn't just about the grain though. It was about everything you get from the optical process, including how the dye layers interlay, how light 
light halides through them, the imperfection of die couplers, and the slight gate weave and breathing and softness. Those are the artifacts we wanted to embrace. That's a lot more than talking about grain. Maybe that's something you can't replicate unless you undergo this lengthy process. Maybe it's something for most viewers don't even notice. We talk about these details as filmmakers, but as moviegoers, I think it's something people feel. It's something you can't put your finger on. It's something you just experience, and I think that's what Villeneuve was trying to go for. The film versus digital debate will continue on. Some directors like Christopher Nolan love film, and someone like David Fincher loves digital. In Dune, we can see a hybrid of the two. Now we have a debate if it's worth doing. Why didn't they just use film or create the film look in post? If you listen to the filmmakers talk about the production, not just the film out process, but the approach to visual effects, their locations, the feeling of each shot, and drive to get things right and being done a certain way, gives the film an epic stage and foundation to be built on. Whether you like this film or not, agree or disagree with their choices, as a filmmaker, you should absorb the process, learn and take note of their thoughts and work ethic. It can help you in your work and approach to whatever you do as a filmmaker. I want to leave you with one more quote by the cinematographer Greg Frazier to sum his work up on Dune. When we went digital and when film stocks got reduced to a core number, we lost options. But with this process, you can shoot with any of the leading cameras you want, whichever one suits the project, and then the world opens up again. I like that. Well, there you have it, creating the look for Dune. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more in the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment with your thoughts about the look of Dune. Until next time, it's a wrap.